Everyone, this is a workshop um, presented by the teaching and learning team, myself Susanna Brandon, Laura Mason and Rachel Newton from Myerscale College and we're going to look today at the tentative toe dip into the digital world to the deep dive where we've all found ourselves uh, completely online as a result of COVID-19. So the aim of the workshop today is firstly to reflect on the RTLA project and to identify where we at MySCO were functioning in the digital landscape pre-COVID-19, to describe the changes introduced as a result of the pandemic and consider what we've learned along the way. And then hopefully share some ideas um, together with where we go from here in terms of planning for the new academic year. So in terms of the OTLA project and MySCO College, um, our aim was to improve digital competency um, across college, um, to share ideas and resources in our professional exchange network, to better support both learners and colleagues in um, effective use of digital technology to improve teaching and learning. So where were my go in terms of digital skills pre-COVID-19? Well, for as long as I can remember as a lecturer at Myersco College, which is now 12 years and counting, there's been a push for digital upskilling. And uh, as we all have um, hypothesised about scenarios where we're teaching skills to students who will go on to work in environments with processes developing so quickly, many of the jobs may not have even existed at the start of the educational journey. And yet, um, these scenarios, despite the pace of the digital world, felt like a choice. Um, we created CPD and um, attended CPD, and it was generally selected to gently ease colleagues into a more effective use of digital skills. Um, within the last five years, the VLE was introduced and lots of work around the aligning of digital skills with vocational pedagogy and a strong message that if the digital resource was not improving the learner experience, then not to use it and still providing practitioners with a choice. So in terms of the project, we um, invited um, delegates and some of you may have attended our, uh, our session where we invited um, you over to my scale to have a look at some of the, uh, the the things that we were trialing and some of the success stories in utilizing digital technology in our day-to-day -day teaching and learning. So what changes were made as a result of COVID-19? As we all know, mid-March this year, that choice um, of the tentative toe dip into digital appeared to be removed and COVID-19 forced the retreat of the country into a sanctuary of their own homes as we entered lockdown and entered into a completely unknown territory of full remote digital delivery of our online courses. The first weeks, of course, were reactive with lots of meetings, lots of navigation around those resources we'd been shown and perhaps thought, oh, well, they look great. Perhaps I'll practice that over summer ready for September. But the start reality was that we had lost the option and we were all learning together and on the hoof. The priority more about human connection and well-being and making sure colleagues and learners were safe and well connected through whatever means work for them as an individual. So there's a huge emphasis on well-being and maintaining that connection to support colleagues and learners. And uh, we saw lots of people on Teams calls, on Zoom calls, phone calls, groups and one-to-ones um, as a, a teaching and learning um, coach, myself and Rachel introduced a newsletter just with the aim of um, updating all colleagues on a weekly basis with news from campus, with teaching tips, with wellbeing tips and just that reaching out and keeping the momentum going of sharing and, and keeping connected. So it was definitely um, an update of communication that was priority at that point. So what have we learned in this time? Um, reflecting on those first weeks, although they were terrifying and uncertain times, they also saw the emergence of so much joy 
We all laughed at the news in 2017 when Professor Robert Kelly was explaining the South Korean politics live on the BBC when his children suddenly wandered in and took the spotlight. Yet this, however, has been a daily occurrence for many of us as we've juggled family life with work commitments. We've met each other's children, pets, and I feel so much more that we've shared learning together. Uh, it's my view that being forced into a situation where we've all been open to a little vulnerability, we've built stronger rapport and relationships with our peers and our learners. We're sharing ideas and initiatives across the sector through social media, professional exchange networks like today, and we're all just having a go. Sometimes it works like a charm, sometimes it's a frustrating glitch, but it's all valuable learning and we're doing it together. So yes, there've been challenges to learners and colleagues where working remotely has, has provide, provided real challenge, including access to resources, time management and digital overload. But there's also been improvements to efficiencies. So meetings have been much more um, effective as we've been able to engage with everybody without the um, constraints of travel and timetables. Um, we've built rapport and there's been much more creativity and we were all apprehensive but we've been forced to take the plunge into the digital world and we now need to align that digital with the pedagogy to create a real rich experience for our learners. We of course don't know exactly how the future looks when we're thinking about where we go next in terms of next steps and planning. But then again, we never did. We never knew what September would hold. We just made an assumption that it would be the same as the previous year. Now we've been forced to really look at how we differentiate our teaching and learning, and we must harness our newfound superpowers of putting people as individuals first and make sure that we're providing the best possible opportunities and not return to the safe. It's the way we did it last year. So moving forward, a blended learning model is the most likely to provide flexibility to maintain safety and support for vocational learners. Following our digital workshop at Myerscale College, we had planned uh, an event where the delegates would return in July and share with us the digital skills that they'd learnt on our day and share with each other how they'd integrated it into their practice. I'm sure as a result of the past few months and uh, the real need for the digital push that we've all learned far more valuable lessons and we've all got experiences to share. We've ex already established that it's always better together. So I think now's a great time to share. Um, I'm gonna leave um, the floor open now um, Rachel uh, Newton and Laura Mason are going to share a few of their uh, wins and experiences from a teaching and learning perspective at Myasco. And then what we'd really love is for you to share some of your experiences and where you see the future moving forward. Thanks ever so much for your time, for your generosity, your attention and your participation. Thank you. Right, brilliant. Thank you, everybody. Did everybody manage to hear that okay? Yeah, wonderful. So, Susanna, are you there? We lost her. I'm here? No, I'm here. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> I managed, yeah. <laughs> brilliant. So, yeah, so what I'd like to do, I know that you've been doing some work as our uh, um, relatively new head of teaching and learning so we've we've formed quite um we're a new team effectively aren't we we, we kind of came together pretty much um about a month before lockdown started and started to put some things into place some ideas into place and, and we very quickly had to adapt together so uh, maybe you could just share some of those um plans now yeah absolutely yeah so as, as Suzanne has already said in the presentation and thanks for the comments everybody and, and thanks there's some lovely comments Suzanne I don't know whether you've read them about the positive view and everything and I think that's um Susanna's specialism particularly about um positive all the way which is what we need isn't it in particularly in difficult times 
Um, but yeah, we, we were definitely in the position of where we had to move very quickly, just like everybody else here. Um, and we did that with, with, with success. And I just wanted to pick up a couple of things in the presentation. So Susanna's mentioned about the newsletter. So um, Susanna and Rachel were in post about a week. I mean, they were advanced <laughs> practitioners before that, but, but we, were, we moved into a role of teaching and learning coach, which is our cross college role. And I think they were in post about a week before lockdown. So the newsletter has, has been absolutely crucial. They called it the TLC Times and that goes out weekly. And um, on that, there's been, you know, just some key messages. There's been um, well-being tips, digital tips, which we know are obviously really important at the moment, teaching and learning tips. And then they've also opened up like a Zoom room, um, which is weekly. That's also advertised. And at first, I think, you know, if we're honest, participation in that was was slow at first because I think everybody was just bombarded trying to get their head around. But now actually it started to pick up and, and we've had colleagues from the apprenticeship provision getting involved. Um, because I think for them, some of this distanced work, particularly for us who, who study across the country, has not been as much of a shock. So actually as, as FE, we, we've got something to learn from the apprenticeship side. But we're in a position now where we're, we're looking forward and um, one of the things that we're doing um, on the 6th of July would have been our normal CPD day. And I know there was some talk of CPD days this morning. And we've decided just to bite the bullet and, and move it to online. So very much a format, a format like today. And um, what we hope through that CPD day is not only that some of the sessions we've particularly designed to support people um, with this blended delivery for September, but also the way we've set the day up a bit like um, what Chloe and the team have done today with the wake club but we've done it on our canvas site is to then also model how how learning can be set out on a page so for example there are chat rooms there are pre-recorded sessions and videos there's reading materials and then there's links links to live lessons so it's kind of a, a double whammy really lots of useful sessions but also set out in a way of modeling good practice um, <clears throat> from that we're we're also putting together a digital skills analysis and again i think there were a couple of colleagues that mentioned that this morning um, for students but what we want to do is one for staff um, because We've got the tell spiral system. We've got a, a system of, of staff development for digital skills. But I think what we're realizing now is that we need it to be far more individualized than what it is, because it might be just one individual in a team that's actually got a very low skill set or has never used particular technology before. So we're putting that together to go out so, as soon as possible. And then we've got another CPD day in September, which we're anticipating will also be online. And what we'll be able to do is pick up some of some of that feedback that's come from those digital skills analysis to put on on, on the CPD day as well. Um, other small things we're doing at MySco is looking at ways in which if we've, if we've got to have reduced classes, so ways in which we count, because what we all know is we need <clears throat> learners to have that interaction on campus. That's why a lot of them come to us, particularly with the kind of campus we've got and the practical nature. Um, so we're looking at ways we can, if, if we need to do split classes, how do we record classes live and stream them whilst they're also running? with microphones and so on <clears throat> excuse me so that's a bigger piece of work um there as well i don't know if um sue or susanna or rachel wants to add anything to that i think you've covered quite a lot of what we're doing now laura but um yeah just going uh, to the zoom room that we do weekly <coughs> um, you touched on the fact that apprenticeship and skills has just given us some sort of top tips and just to share some of those with you um, what they were saying in apprenticeships is that the more that you do the online learning and the more that you use all of the different all the different tools the easier it gets and we sort of say basically what this this whole session is about you know picking your toe in and having a go is the best way to approach it and and it just goes from there and it, it, it gets easier and easier um so yeah um but the the zoom rooms have been really really helpful and i think everyone's had to adapt but um you know i think it, it's just being flexible and that willingness to learn is what's helping everyone at my to to move forward isn't it I think what I'd like to ask now is um, 
for those of you that joined us at Myasco, I know there's, there's been some lovely comments saying you'd had a good day that day. Is there anything that you can share from, um, from your experience with us that you, you can share with us? It all goes quiet. <laughs> You can put any comments or questions into the chat as well, and we can pick those up. Or even if, if it's not something from that day, has anyone got anything to share in terms of what their plans are moving forward? A bit like some of the things that we've shared about what, how we're going to support both staff and learners um, in this digital climate moving forward. I think it's funny when we when we chose digital skills to work on during the Poonam last September. Yes. Little realize just what was going to happen this Absolutely. year and how, how essential that was going to be and how yes. all of have, um got up here so because you've <laughs> done that you've done that preparation because it's been part of your strategy anyway it's allowed yeah. you to operate um, and function very well in the you know the current climate really just um you know what are people's what is it looking like what what's september looking like at Myasco, other colleges, you know, what's the plan at the moment? What's the thinking? I'd be really interested to hear, you know, what your organisations are, are going, planning to do. For Myasco, uh, a lot of the theory-based theory -based sessions are going to be held online, whereas the, the smaller numbers of practical sessions are going to be on site. So that's probably the, the biggest sort of plan for Myasco. And are the students actually going to be coming in at all? Are they doing like a phase return, certain year groups? Yeah, we've already started. So because of the nature of some of the qualifications we have, um, some of them are kind of an industry competency qualifications that can't be calculated. So for example, um, tractor driving or um, chainsaw using of course we can't just decide um, that those learners are competent in those fields with such health and safety so we've actually already um, managed to bring back some very small group learners um, using social distancing and all and kind of um, all the PPE and whatnot and that's gone very well actually and I think it's been lovely to see um, some of that happening again on campus and then the plan really moving forward is um, to manage something similar so at the moment we're looking at it's not a one size fits all for every department because of the wide range of nature of subjects and you know the different uh, requirements in terms of physical resourcing so we're looking at what does each department need and whether that's small groups half groups certain certain levels in on certain days and so on and then of course with that though will definitely be some form of blended approach um which is supported with online delivery and again it's looking at that because we've also got learners um who actually are on uh, residence in campus so what we don't want to do is that they're in residence he you know on campus but then they're just sat on the laptop all the time on online delivery because that wouldn't be fulfilling for them so we've also got that to consider as well graham's put some interesting he shared yeah. what they're doing graham would you like to come in and just update colleagues on and elaborate a little bit more about your sort of quarter of the timetable in groups of five interesting yeah we've been we've been looking at um the colleagues have been in looking at our classrooms and saying how much if we're having two meters well, how many students could we get in and in my particular room I get two which is um, magnificent so we've <laughs> we've been looking at capping groups particularly I mean I, I teach ESOL so we're looking at capping groups at 10 students and then having um, a quarter of the time face to face so Half of the group would come in in the morning, half would come in in the afternoon, deliver directly to them with staggered start and finish times to keep the flow in the building and, and all of that. And then use that time really to embed the digital skills they'll need to be able to access the rest of the program, which will be definitely digital led. We're looking at either, um, I mean, we're currently using Zoom. We, I, I want to get us on to Google education but because we're a council service it have all sorts of duck eggs when it comes to using anything other than what we currently have so we use edmodo we're using zoom as our basis 
and then they we we managed to get some some money and we bought all the teaching staff uh, mobile phone so on the corporate contract so we can sort of meet the students at their level so a lot with a lot of our ESOL students they can only use whatsapp or they, they don't have much data and and even if it's text or a phone call or, or or just that just to keep that contact going over these last few few months has been really really important and i think as we move into september we're going to do a digital skills audit with everyone at the beginning and then the students who don't have technology will will group them together and that will be a, a posting stuff to them blended kind of model that way using actual physical resources and then those who do have access to digital will put them in a more sort of digital stream that's sort of where we are at the minute but of course it might all change as we know within uh, you know a few seconds fantastic thanks for sharing we've got kelly's also got an update for us do you want to sort of elaborate a little bit more kelly on, on what you're doing yes we have just rolled out um like an audit for teaching staff however we've not just focused on digital skills um we've focused on blended do they know what blended kind of is and strategies and um, for doing that so we we have moved to google we're gonna we're trying to become a google reference college so um we've kind of based it around there and the digital skills they might need um we rolled that out and then from that we're going to form a cpd package so really there's some minimum standards we want for september so all staff have got to plan for the first six weeks a fully blended program that might differ depending on the area so we, we might have some pre-entry esol students who would need more face-to-face -face provision some courses have more practical elements so we're not saying there's one size fits all level three students they might not need to come in as much so it's giving staff the opportunity to to look at their curriculum and work out what's best for their, their learners um, and we're just going to put a support pa package in to, to try and help them achieve that um, but we're linking it to cpd where they're in charge so they choose where they currently are depending on this we've called it an mot as opposed to an audit um, and then they're going to move through the stages so i don't know if any of you know the summer model the different levels of, of moving um, to blended or we, we've kind of designed our own and staff will get badges as they move along um, so yeah that's kind of our plan um, we shared it in the training earlier so um, there will be the recording and the resources there if anybody wants to have a look that would be fantastic. Kelly, okay, just remind me, what college are you from again? It's RNN Group, so it's Rotherham College, Dern Valley College, and Works ah. North Knotts College. Can I just ask, what was that model that you were talking about? I've not heard of it. The SAMR, S-A-M-R. I'll just put it in. Thank you. We've kind of taken that idea and then put our own what we would say are the minimum requirements because staff need the digital skills but they also need to be able to look at which elements they're going to put online so a lot of the knowledge like you said the theory they're looking at putting that online and having staff's um, groups split for the practical sessions things like that Yeah, no, I think that's a really good point. I've made a note of that, Kelly. So thank you, actually, because yeah, um, I'm going to be I'm going to be working with our digital team um, to have a look at this digital analysis. And you're right, it's it's not just the physical capability, but it's actually the understanding of it in the wider context, isn't it? So I've mm. uh, just made a note of that. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, the other thing that we're putting together is, um, and again, I know it's something that Sue mentioned this morning, um, is kind of like a protocols document. Um, and it's not to restrict creativity or anything like that, but it's just because what we want to ensure that there is a particular standard across the organisations and that, that learners are getting um, a good deal and that, that also um, 
we're utilizing the best tools that, that we can um so that's something else and it's and people have they've, in fact people have asked for it i think it's just that a bit more structure to what we deliver how we mm -hmm. deliver in it um and and you know and, and the what, what our focus and take on it is um so that's another thing yeah, yeah. I think that's really important, actually. I think from uh, quite a few of the, the discussions I've had with colleagues from across the sector, there's, there's definitely something around uh, the resources that we push. And although um, we need to be mindful of what's available to learners and colleagues, it's about not throwing everything in the mix. It's kind of maybe three um, three forms of communication, three mind maps, what you know, just a small amount of each resource and 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 then you don't get faced with this digital overload because there's there's something very, very different I'm finding about teaching online and being actually on screen for for a long period of time. I've been with my learners this morning doing professional discussions and by lunchtime I was absolutely exhausted. So it, it, it is absolutely a, a, a different kind of um, a different kind of landscape completely, isn't it? And I think we need to be mindful of that for each other and keeping our own our own well being in check and, and that of the colleagues and the learners. Brilliant. We've got some examples. Uh, Chloe's very kindly shared. Um, some um, examples and we've got some links that colleagues have shared. Rachel, you've just put a link in there um, to a blog and the, 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 of the SAMR model. So have you got experience of that yourself as well? Limited. Um, I just put it in because I thought it would be helpful. Um, okay, thank you. Time to do, pick it apart. Um, but just to say, we have devoted some time to putting together a blended learning model Okay. Um, Manchester Adult Education Service and even though all of our different curriculum areas are saying well we're going to need to adapt that bit or this part of it won't quite apply to us it's still been really important to have it as a, a shared reference point um, it's almost like important to have it there so people can pull it apart um, but we've got a shared language about things now which I think is helping us at least with the kind of discussions that we need to have Okay, fantastic. And we've got um, a question from Kirsty. Kirsty, do you want to speak to your colleagues about that in terms of sort of making a decision about which bits are online and which bits aren't? Check in. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, um, it was just really just I was thinking the other day. I mean, our college at the moment is still um, saying they're planning to go as normal, but I, we're thinking increasingly that's just not going to be realistic for September. So I think that will change. But um, so if it does change to the blended model, I was thinking the other day, well, which things realistically would be probably as good or not too much worse online, ideally as good, if not better, and then which things wouldn't. And I think for English, I came to the conclusion that probably I'd want writing still in the classroom because ultimately in the end exam, they have to write quite quickly on paper to certain time frames, and they're, they're marked on their natural, well, their own ability in spelling, punctuation and grammar. So really want to get them working without autocorrect and things like that, that would probably be on if they're on a screen, whereas reading less so and reading, they tend to be naturally um, more inclined to do with a little bit less face-to-face -face support because they find it usually a little bit easier responding to reading questions than writing. So that was my initial thought, try and think kind of, which things do they struggle with more and therefore is a sudden kind of half change going to be worse for? So I don't know if that's helpful to anybody. But. Yeah, no, that is, and um, you know, and it's just reminded me actually, Kirsty, that I think one of the things that we've done that, that I'd like to think is making this effective is that bottom up approach because what we can't do is tell the experts which are you know so like Rachel you're an because sorry you're an expert in your subject therefore how to how to deliver that in a blended way so it's been very much um and I know like Sue's part of our SLT but it's been very much about actually getting the plans from the the teaching teams and then feeding that up through the college um to make sure that 
that the plans are fit for purpose, the right for the learners and the right for the people that are going to be delivering them, which is ultimately the most important thing, rather than you have to do this, that and the other, you know. Yeah, what yeah. we did more at, um, at Bradford is we've asked um, staff to go away and kind of look at the curriculum and to see if they can sort of hive off a third of um, the, you know, what they'd be delivering and see ways that they can deliver that online and obviously the support of the teaching and learning team behind them. And what we did as soon as we went into lockdown, the teaching and learning team, um, we were at college, we, um, we, we use team, Microsoft Teams, Planet E Stream, um, and we use a, a, a Moodle Canvas. And that's th those were the three um, supported um, platforms that we were encouraged to use. And I think when because we went off and we hadn't had anything, any time to play with teams or anything like that, I think because everybody was at the same foundation of starting, that people were quite happy to take on board and, and to go forward um, with such a positive attitude and to try different things because we were all, all in the same boat. And the other thing, the teaching and learning team, what we did was we presented um, lots of webinars of, we, we, we went through the different platforms and we did a you know a Moodle users and Moodle advanced users and we, we um, obviously did the webinars and recorded those and they are all accessible for staff to, to dip in and out of, of when um, of when they need and obviously we're still here around to support them um, ongoing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's great. S similar with digit with on Canvas, the teaching and excellence site and the digital site have been really key to supporting um, staff members. So the digital team really quickly um, got some um, videos and other tutorial information up on there for teams as soon as possible, and and that has been you know, and then obviously being on hand for support throughout. And those um, have been really key sites to to kind of point people in the direction of so they've got that immediate support and help and the other thing yeah the other thing the webinars that the teaching and learning team actually put together themselves we actually modeled what we would expect from an online lesson as well um, just to you know support and we very very quickly found that um, we, at first we were trying to deliver far far too much online um, and, and obviously we scaled that back pretty quickly um, you know to because let's face it, the Zoom fatigue and the, um, it is definitely a new um, experience that we're all part of, isn't it, at the moment? Yeah, yeah. There's a question just there from Julie at the bottom that I think would be really good to ask everybody because I think it's a difficult, really difficult one um, that Julie's put on about working in family learning and working with schools and um, working with learners who don't have access to digital tech and data. Has anyone had any of that at the moment and any kind of quick wins or anything that you've done that's have had an impact? <laughs> it's a tough one, isn't it? As I said, before we've been using like WhatsApp and things like that with, with students who've got very limited tech, because that's one way pretty much everyone has got WhatsApp or another messaging app. So we've been sending things through on there and and even just a phone call as well has been really useful in addition to some posted work. So students who can't get on Edmodo or on Zoom, um, they've been doing the work, they've been taking photos of it with their mobile phone, sending it to me on WhatsApp. I've been marking it with, uh, you know, in, with my pen on the, on, um, and then sending it back to them. So via, via WhatsApp, which is an easy win, really, and, and doesn't actually require that much technologically to be able to achieve it. I think. We've had... Um in York, we've had a really good Facebook page um, where um, ideas for doing stuff in family groups have been put up and then learners have been encouraged to try them out and then post photos back of them trying different things. And then sometimes when learners said, look, I tried this with my family and here's a photo of us doing it, it was really good. We'll then highlight that on the Facebook page. So it's really a lot of Facebook and, and none of the other 
um, more formal like Google Classroom type learning environment at all. But I mean, that's okay for the short term, but for September, I think it's going to have to become a little bit more formal than that. We had a couple of really uh, interesting uh, takes on uh, the initial lockdown um, when we were only allowed to, it seems a, a really long time ago now, but when we were only allowed one hour of exercise a day and one of our uh, landscape tutors encouraged her schools group of 14 to 16 to use that hour's exercise to go out, walk around the local estate or the local park and take photographs of the hard landscapes or the walls and, and flagging and driveways. And then they came back together and had a discussion about that. So that was, you know, kind of killing two birds with one stone. And, and what she found was that some of the um, young learners that perhaps didn't really enter into discussion so much face to face were much more confident mm -hmm. in the com you know in their own space in their own homes so i think that's a, a really good win as well for for some of the the students that are maybe a little bit more shy and and don't participate quite as well Um, I've just popped something in chat there as everyone was talking. Um, I'll explain a little bit about what what I've written. Um, I said that I think it's important that um, those learners of ours that don't have access to digital and um, data and things like that, that we still help develop their digital resilience and the, especially when we think about the um, essential digital skills and that framework we still need to be encouraging that. How do we do that when it's a post, for example, when we're, do, when we're doing print and post? Well, we could, um, for example, if you're gonna do Google Forms in your, if you're gonna do an activity with a Google Form, um, I'm saying Google Form because I have um, experience with that rather than MS Forms. Um, if you're gonna use a Google Form in an activity, Google Forms you can print out. And when you print it out, it looks very similar to how it actually looks on a screen. So they're still getting that, that visual of how it looks. You can get templates for tweets. You can get templates for Facebook. You can probably make these things in PowerPoint as well. I do a lot of stuff in PowerPoint that isn't actually what PowerPoint's for. <laughs> I use it for, for creating things. So you could make um, an Instagram yeah, you can probably find them online. You might be able to get them for free um, or make them yourself in PowerPoint and um, Google Forms. There's other things like that. And I mentioned our colleagues in Secure State because this is something that is not new to them, having to develop their learners digital resilience um, so that when they come, um, you know, when they're on the outside, they're not going what's social media what's twitter what you know that kind of thing so they've been doing that for a long time so you know let's look at our colleagues in the sector and um, look at all the stuff that they're doing as well because there's lots of good stuff out there but i think it's like what lou was saying before there's lots of treasures and sometimes we kind of have them to ourselves and we need to share them a bit more and share them with each other share the load you know absolutely graham you've just made a comment in the chat about using your email templates with your ESOL students. You want to just say a little bit more about that as well, please? Yeah, we just, um, it just like a writing frame, really, which, which you know, we've all seen and used in different contexts. And it's um, just making it look as, as much like uh, a digital email program as possible and getting them to use the openings and closings that, that would be used in, in email in, in the real world. And we've been trying to, get as much digital type stuff around the work we've been doing even if they they're not using the digital at the time so i think um the more as chloe said which is great the more they're kind of exposed to how it looks and and what it would be like on actually in the digital then it, it'll be a bit easier for them to use and uh Susanna just sent me a little message saying uh, about Canva, which you introduced me to actually when when I was in there <laughs> over at Myasco, and I've been we've, we actually did just before before the lockdown while we were still in with my entry one ESOL students. We used Canva to make posters about keeping safe, washing hands, and you know all that stuff, and and they laminated them. They sent them around the council. They were in all the buildings, and it was just it was just brilliant. So so tough. Love it. <laughs>
there are lots of comments in in the chat and lots of ideas about what people are doing we almost need to kind of take all of these chloe and put them on something <laughs> because it's loads of ideas and suggestions about what people are doing going forward and we could share it i'm muted that happens all the time doesn't it that yes. <laughs> always mm -hmm. muted bah, 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 bah. um yes um we've got loads of stuff going on in all the chats i've asked all the co-pilots to save all the chats um i'm gonna have a little look at it next week and see what we can do my idea is that you can actually um you can build into wakelets the wakelet agenda that we're using at the moment um i'm going to make a copy of it so we've still got that agenda but make a copy of it and then build into it all the tweets that have been happening because you can pop tweets in there as well it's fantastic that's my i don't work for wakelet by the way um, <laughs> but, <laughs> um so this is the first time i've used it as an agenda so also i'd love some feedback on that but that's out of the session um so and chloe i'm absolutely <laughs> sure you won't lose anything it'll all be in there definitely <laughs> we can add bits in there so the chat so i'll have a little look whether i could just take bits out of it or maybe put them into word doc you know into pdf so i don't know i'll have a little look at what we've got on there links to things i'll pop in the wakelet so it'll be a nice like documentation of everything that's been going on today and it means that you can also see what's been going on in the other workshops yeah, as well brilliant uh, julie i'm really interested in your comment in chat about doing the summer challenge using a google site would you be happy yeah, just we, to share a bit more um, about that with us? It sounds really interesting. Yeah, in uh, I've worked for Family Learning in Sheffield um, for the council, and um, we we're in our third year of uh, giving a summer challenge to families. And in the past, we've used Google Classroom, um, which has been awkward because a lot of learners when you're working at a distance trying to get them on to Google Classroom can be uh, challenging we've found anyway uh, so this this time we're trying it with the Google site so we're asking people to sign up uh, through um, social media so they're emailing us and then we're going to send them a link to a Google site and we're going to post up every week over the summer uh, lots of different activities so based around a lot of it based around health and well-being um, and and lots of fun activities that they can do together so yeah we, we've had uh, good success the past two years we've had within the first day we had about 50 emails from people wanting to sign up because we advertise through school as well so they've posted it on their Facebook and Twitter page as well so yeah I'm looking forward to seeing how how it goes yeah okay so lots of comments coming in um rachel you, you're talking about creating the um newsletter using canva which again something that myasco has been doing uh, what sort of um, response have you had to that from your colleagues? You're muted, Rachel. Sorry. Um, it's one of our subcontractors uh, called Back on Track, who work with people from very particularly disadvantaged backgrounds, um, many of whom don't have access to devices or uh, digital skills and they've had huge success with this newsletter. I think one of the nice things is that although the learners haven't used IT to necessarily to create drawings or they've, they've got colouring pages and they've got poem competitions but they're then sending their contributions in by post and then seeing them published in this proper um, you know proper professional format so I think that's been um, that's worked really well from the point of view of like the learners sort of feeling um, that they've got some involvement with IT, but also just keeping that sense of community because um, they're seeing their you know, fellow learners' uh, names in there and some photographs and so on. Um, I, think it's, I think it's worked really well. Fantastic, that's great stuff. So we've got about 10 minutes left. Um, Susanna, Laura, Rachel, is there anything else that you want to, to add in terms of before summing up? Are there any final questions or comments? It's 
just unmute myself. Um, and and it, it's just real thanks to uh, to everyone for sharing, really. Um, obviously, we were really disappointed not to be able to uh, host the the second of the events that we were hoping to over at college and uh, it's just really it's really lovely to hear that some of the things that were shared on that day mm. have been useful and shared and and thank you for for all your stories and your impact stories that you've shared with us with other things as well i think this is definitely the way forward um is is the professional exchanges i think you know, seeing and hearing from colleagues across the country is is been a real eye opener for me, particularly um, as as a relatively new uh, teaching and learning coach. And uh, and I, I fully believe in you know better together and long may it last. Hey hey, absolutely brilliant, <laughs> Laura. And I just, yeah, just to add there that you know when things do get back to some sort of normality if whatever that may be um if you do happen to pick up i know graham mentioned that he did start on some of the arvr stuff following that day but then obviously things took a turn so if you do pick up any of those elements um in the future we'd love to hear from you about what you've done um because that's something that we're still moving forward with in fact um, for some of our, I think it's the agriculture team, you know, some of the AR and VR work that they've done prior to this lockdown scenario. So kind of filming virtual environments has been an absolute godsend for them in terms of being able to show those particular working environments, real working environments to their learners, but on a digital platform whilst they're sat at home or in the bedrooms or what have you. Yeah, um, so it just shows that eventually, once we've got more and more of that kind of material, it um, it will really support this kind of online learning as well. Mm. And maybe can I just add, Laura, that we, so we've got a dissemination event online in a couple of weeks. Uh, one of our projects, which does a lot of VR, and so we're going to share some more of our work with VR and how staff have used that pre and post lockdown. So what I'll do is I've got the link for that. So if I, I'll tweet it and tag PD North in, and then maybe you could pick that up then, Chloe, and sort of share that further. She's muted. I'll mute again. Will <laughs> <laughs> I read something on Twitter that somebody said that perhaps one of the most uh, used phrases of lockdown was, um, sorry, I forgot to unmute. <laughs> <laughs> also, you're on mute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely wonderful stuff there and so much sharing. And uh, we'll find out a little bit more about what the future holds and how we might be able to keep this conversation going very soon, I hope, because it would be such a shame you know, for us not to be able to continue with the connections that have been made and this wonderful community of practice that's been um, put together and evolved over, over many years. So I, we've got another five minutes or so. Shall we um, come should to we a close? A, or should, we, should, we go, should we go and have a little cup of tea and, a, yes. and go to food before the next yeah, one? Yeah, let's stretch our legs <laughs> and uh, before yeah, the next Thanks, one. And <laughs> see you in the main room in seven minutes. And I just want to say before we go, a massive big thank you to all our colleagues at, at Myoscope, Susanna, Laura, Rachel and, and, and Sue, of course, those metaphors that are going to stay with me forever. Thank you very much. We can unmute and do a big round of applause before we go and stretch our legs. Thank you very much. Thank you.